Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is The Unstoppable Show and I am Jennifer Hardy. Today I am joined by the beautiful Mary. How are you doing, Mary? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored and I love that you say good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I don't ever know where people are listening in from, so I have to be have to make sure I get everyone. Uh, Mary Fane, and what is your surname? Am I pronouncing it right when I say Brandt? Yes, that's correct. Fantastic. Excellent. It's, it's a wonder to have you here today. Thank you so much for popping on. So Mary, talk to us a little bit about what your business is and what you do in the world. Sure. So I want to thank you for having me on. I'm so honored that you um, allowed me to come on to your podcast. So thank you. Um, so my, I'm a career coach for women who are in transition. That's how my journey started. And I've become a LinkedIn strategist for female entrepreneurs, helping them increase their credibility and visibility. And along their way, um, their confidence has been increased through my courses. Wonderful. Excellent. And um, let's just get stuck right in. What brought you to this point and, and doing this in, for, for your business? Have you always been an entrepreneur? Has it been something that you've um, just went into? I'd love to know the story. Actually, no, I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, my dad tried to get me to be one because he had his own real estate appraising company and I worked a little bit for him, but I really liked my nine to five job, right? Because I had a state, steady uh, paycheck, you know, my vacation time and that just... Being an entrepreneur was too risky for me, per se. I became an entrepreneur out of necessity. My mom was, uh, she had Alzheimer's. And as it worsened, I really needed to be there for her. So in 2014, there were some incidents, like maybe a fire started in our house and some other things that happened. And so I made the decision that I needed to leave my full-time job to care for her and I didn't know how I was going to pay our bills. Um, I started off as this coach because I, I always was a coach wherever I worked. Like people would come to me for advice and I actually had coached a couple women to leave my place of business because it wasn't a good fit for them. Oh. And, they had, and they had jobs so it was just this natural transition but I fumbled so much in the beginning. I didn't know what I was doing but it, my journey really started out of the need for caring for my mom and Alzheimer's is such so near and dear to my heart and the struggles that people have with it. And, um, I needed to be there and be her voice and her advocate. Yeah. My goodness. That's, in, that's incredible. So, so talk to me a little bit then about the, the transition. So how did you start your business? Like, cause obviously it's, it's tricky to, you know, start any kind of business as it is, but the online space again is a completely different kettle fish. So how did you manage to weave all those parts together in order to kind of um, get your business started and then of course to grow it as well? I love that you said weave. I would say that I took tape and I patched it all together. You know, <laughs> it, was, it was going to networking events and aligning myself with people that have already done it. That was number, the key, like put away your ego say, I don't know anything. I don't know what to do. And just kind of, I dove in and I love to learn. So I just immersed myself in that. I did a lot of different trainings and <coughs> excuse me. And you know, I, I worked with clients at a very low rate, trying to get my rhythm down and figure out where my strengths and skills were. And thankfully um, I'm surrounded. I, I created this community I had a great community here with some networking groups and Hera Hub, which is a uh, workspace for female entrepreneurs. So it's a safe place. They nurture you, they help you grow, and they, they've seen my growth in this four years. Um, fast forward, my, I, I was building up momentum, and then my mom passed in 2016, or yes, 2016, and I kind of shut down, right? I had to go through that, that grieving process. And it was with a conversation, a marketing uh, strategy session that I had purchased before my mom passed with a, another uh, of my c -Win sisters. c -Win is Christian Women Entrepreneur Group that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like about two months after my mom passed, her assistant reached out and said, Mary, you know, Stephanie said that you purchased this strategy session. She just wanted to know, do you want to use it since you paid it, paid for it? And I said, sure, why not? right? I'd already paid for it. It was an hour of my time. And I have to say that that one session was a pivot 
in my career in, as an entrepreneur, we came up with a LinkedIn bakery. And I have to share that that name honors my mom because my mom was this amazing baker. She could bake it like people paid her for her cakes and pies. Mm -hmm. So the LinkedIn bakery honors my mom and Stephanie knew the journey with my mom and how my mom was like my best friend. And so that name just honoring her and coming up with this fun brand, because one of the things with LinkedIn, when I worked with people, I always say it was the ugly stepchild of the social media platforms right? It was, it was clunky and kind of boring. Nobody liked to be on it. So I like to make it fun and informative. So with this new branding, I actually had life breathe back into this entrepreneur journey. So one tip I want to share is don't be afraid to pivot. You know, you, right? We do things um, in our, as an entrepreneur and we think we have to stick with those. And I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned is to keep changing and evolving and it's okay to say goodbye to something. I used to host these two hour LinkedIn labs every month. They ran for two years and then earlier this year, they just started dying down and I decided why am I putting so much energy and time into these labs when it really wasn't being as successful as it was. So I said goodbye to them. And everyone's like, you're going to shut them down. I'm like, yeah, they're not serving anymore. It's time to move on to something else. It's so important. I think people get really scared of making big changes in their business because they're, they're normally always afraid of, well, what will everyone else think? Do, will right. People, oh my goodness. Like my business is not doing well because I'm not doing my podcast shows anymore or, you know, this kind of thing. And actually the, in order to grow and move forward, you must, must, must let go of things that aren't serving you. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, um, especially as entrepreneurs, you know, we, we put all the shiny, bright, fun stuff out on social media. Let's be real. Like what you see out there, it's the perfection, right? We're, we're trying to create this sense that we are so successful and we are, but I always like to show the vulnerable and the authentic and the transparent side. Like this is a tough journey folks. Yeah. So you know what, find your tribe, you know what, be authentic and real. And when something isn't working anymore, yeah. just say goodbye to it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just say goodbye to it, move on. And sometimes even just kind of redesign. I don't know how many times we've redesigned things and we're actually going through a massive rebrand at the moment as well. Oh. And, you know, and people are saying, you know, you, everything's, everything's fine, but you know yourself, it's exactly. better exciting when you are absolutely in love with how things look or the values of your business. It makes you 10 times more passionate to jump out your bed and want to want to take action, doesn't it? When you're, when you're in flow and aligned. To what aligned, aligned. My first, so I've been in business four years. I'm on my second business name, second set of logos and second website. And yeah. I'm fine with that. But at first, you know, I was like, well, this just isn't working. And I'm like, man, I spent all this money, but it didn't work. It wasn't aligned with who I am. It wasn't, um, I was trying to be in all transparency. I was looking at what other people were doing and I was trying to be like them. And you know what? I'm not like them. <laughs> God has made us all individual and I needed to find my own voice, my own brand and my own style. And it took a couple years to do that. So if there are any um, new entrepreneurs listening, I just want to encourage you to be open to shifting and changing your brand, your style and finding your own voice. It's great to be inspired by others, but at the end of the day, we have to be ourselves because then we're going to attract the right clients to work with. Absolutely. hundred percent agree with that. Okay. Brilliant. So thank you so much for giving me the kind of journey, the story yeah. of what about, but let's dig into some awesome LinkedIn facts because I do have LinkedIn and we have tried bits and pieces, but we've never really set a proper strategy for it to be honest. And so I would love to know, um, well, first of all, you were speaking just before we came on air about actually having a, a proper business page for LinkedIn. I don't, I didn't even know that there was a difference. So I, I'd love for you just to talk a little bit about what, what that means. I'm um, sure. So everyone has to have a personal profile on LinkedIn. That's how it's set up. But in addition to that, if you're an entrepreneur, business owner, you should have what's called a company page. Okay. Yeah. And the company page will, um, it's, it's not real robust, but you should have a company page. It'll probably take you less than an hour to set it up. You can post things to that up 
company updates. Anytime you have an intern or an assistant, I always suggest that you have them linked to that company page. But what is so great about a company page is on your personal profile, if you have a company and like for my, for instance, I have the LinkedIn bakery and I have my cupcake logo on that personal profile. That just looks a little more professional and I believe it adds a little more credibility when it, you have your logo populate instead of that ugly gray box. So the only way to get your logo to populate on your personal profile is to set up a company page. It's super easy, but many people don't do it. Yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, I haven't yet, but I'm going to. Yes, <laughs> please do. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that we do do it. Okay, wonderful. So what are some of your, uh, let's say, top tips on how to actually get out in front of people using LinkedIn? Uh, so let's start with your profile. You really need to have that filled out. Professional photo, a uh, custom background banner. So not just that ugly blue background banner that LinkedIn shoots out there. Uh, but in, on top of that, really go through your profile and optimize it by filling out all the sections, all your experience. I've worked with some women who were in a career and then became an entrepreneur and they wanted to delete all their past experience. And I was like, no, you don't want to do that. That shows that you've, you've been a successful career woman and now you've pivoted. Let's not be embarrassed of where we came from just because we were in the corporate world. So really fill that out. And also one overlooked section is volunteering. Now volunteering is near and dear to my heart. Um, I try to volunteer a hundred hours a year because I feel the world would be a better place if we all volunteered. Now what is so strong about that is because I put my volunteer work on my profile, I have people reach out to me just because of my volunteer experience. So okay. don't overlook that section. Um, tip number two is to really find your strong and strategic partnerships. So you want to do some searches for people that would be either partners, collaborators. I think many times we think, oh, I got to find those clients. I look at it from a more holistic approach. I want to align myself with those people that are going to be referrals, right? Because yeah. the best business is referrals. So really look at your strong and strategic connections. Since I'm a career coach, recruiters are a natural connection for me. I also um, am connecting with more women who are doing podcasts, things like that, because we can collaborate and we can share uh, clients, right? We can send business to each other. So I'm um, looking at content writers, right? I'm looking um, at digital, in the digital space, the web designers. Those are a great source for me. Um, the most important thing on LinkedIn is to be consistent. So being consistent means that you're posting on a regular basis and that you're adding value to your network. So if you could post once a day, that is great. If you can't do that, um, my advice to my new clients when I start working with them is to go on LinkedIn 20 minutes a day, Monday through Friday right? You spend 20 minutes on Facebook easily or uh, other things. So 20 minutes a day, Monday through Friday, by going on and adding connections, by going on and posting and sharing and commenting on other members' um, posts and articles, you're actually going to increase your credibility and visibility right there just by doing those few things. Now, to take it to that next level, do video. So LinkedIn ranks video content higher than anything else. Wow. So if you, yeah. So if you want to start getting more views on your profile, cause let's break it down folks. <laughs> so in order to get clients, you really just need more profile views. Profile views lead to more connections, lead to more referrals, lead to more clients. But how do you get those profile views? Well, you have to have a rock star profile. So people, you know, stay on it. You need to optimize your profile and then you need to publish content that's hot and informative that's valuable and beneficial to your network. And video content is the number one content on LinkedIn right now. Amazing, I never knew that. So I obviously knew it was big on Facebook and Instagram are really putting it at the forefront of everything that we're doing. So it's amazing to, to, to realize now that LinkedIn are just, they're, they're right behind. Or They're right behind. And there's a lot of features coming out to LinkedIn in this next year. So I would really, you know, if you're not on LinkedIn or you don't have a great profile, now is the time to jump on and get it sparkly, get it all, make a rock star profile and start putting out content. 
fantastic. I love it. I'm excited. So <laughs> when, it, when it comes to LinkedIn, what would you say would be the best um, way to reach out to people? Um, because I see a lot of people doing it very wrong um, on yeah. social media platforms and, and coming across very kind of spammy and salesy. Uh, and salesy, which is not what you want. So what would your advice be um, to reach out in a professional manner, but also, you know, relatable and, and friendly? Absolutely. Yeah. This is one of my favorite topics. Please do not connect with someone. And the first message you sell or send them is something salesy. Like mm -hmm. you'd be great on my team or, Hey, I've written this book. And you know, if you want to sign up for my course, no, 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 don't do that. So first off, my number one tip is always send a note. It's called a note on LinkedIn. It's like a personal message. So you want to say, Something like, hey, Jennifer, um, I saw your profile. It came across when I was on LinkedIn. I really like the work that you're doing. I'm looking to connect with other savvy businesswomen, and I'd love to add you to my network. Perfect. Just Perfect. Keep, it, keep it real, folks. And then start there. And then, you know what? Get to know that person. And then, you know, if it's the right thing, you can um, ask them, hey, can I... I'm launching a course. For example, I'm launching a LinkedIn course. Hey, Jennifer, when I launch that course, would it be okay for you to share it with your network? Yeah. Right? You don't, do not come across salesy. Do not send the first three communications on LinkedIn should not be a sales pitch. I've actually schooled people on that. Not people that are my clients, but I just want to help them. And the first thing was join my team. And I reached out to that woman. I said, you, you obviously don't realize I have a successful business. You did not read my whole profile. Um, I'm going to let you know that most people would delete you and block you right now, but I want to help you. So please don't send this kind of message. You need to get to know people. So we actually had a conversation on LinkedIn and she said, thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, yeah, that is so important because I have um, gone to, you know, write back because that's another thing, like when you're not actually doing a little bit of research and it's just a respect thing, isn't it as well? I mean, you don't know. Absolutely. There's been so many times where I have been doing research and about to send a message to connect or something and then learned that that person has gone through like a really bad time or is, you know, maybe there's been a death in their family or they've Mm. Worse than, well, that's not that's not the right time for me to be sending the messages asking them to join my community, you know. So, um, obviously, I just think being a little bit respectful of, of people, and and yeah, of course, that whole thing where they they because I get it all the time, um, join my team. Like I can't right. no, I do <laughs> it now, but I do kind of want to just be like, right, come on, can I just get you guys all together, <laughs> and can we just do a social media course, um. Right first thing wouldn't it like this is how you approach people and this is how you connect and collaborate and and I actually had someone that was being really rude to me and um, because I said you know no I'm not interested in your business but you know thank you very much for thinking of me and they were like well, why would you say that and it went on and I was like well because I'm not interested but thank you so much now had they have looked at my website or my um, page they would have seen that I have got so many awesome ways of collaborating so I could have had them on my podcast show. Ah. I could have had them maybe do the unstoppable tv you know lots of different things but instead they really got upset and angry because I wasn't interested in their business and that person isn't the right person to even be a connection you know oh. there uh, there are points where I delete people yeah, you because have. You, you're not adding value to my network Right. And if, if someone like was like that with me, I'd be like, you know what? Good luck. And then I would delete them. I was, I would not even want that type of energy in my network. Right. Absolutely. I answered once or twice. And then I was like, okay, yeah, that's it. I'm gone. See you later. Um, but, but yeah, it's very, very important. So you said something really interesting there and it was, um, uh, oh my goodness. What was it you just said that just really kind of just stuck in my head? Oh yeah, it's been able to 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 have that confidence to go. Okay, you're not serving me. You're not you're not supporting yes. or, or being a part of my journey. And and I think it's important for people to realize that it's not wrong to let people go. You know, no, it, not at all. Again, it's this growth thing. In order to be able to grow, you need to get rid of the people that are maybe um, sometimes even bringing you down. Um, you know, within your kind of social media. Um, platforms as well and now that can mean bringing you down like actually saying things but it can also um, for me anyway mean 
people that you're following that you're getting a little bit kind of, um, what's the word, comparisonitis with. Yes. It's just really good to go, okay, I'm going to pause because, I, and I do speak to clients and like, oh yeah, I spent 25 minutes scrolling through Facebook today and seeing everyone doing amazingly and now it's making me feel rubbish. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just get rid of that for a little while. Do you agree with that too? Just let Absolutely. Go. I think as women, sometimes uh, we're nurturers just by our DNA, right? We're nurturers, we nurture relationships and it's hard for us to at times like, oh, I need to get rid of that person. Yeah. Um, and so I always teach my female clients because a lot of times they're like, well, why should I add that person to my network? They're in London, right? They're not even here. How can they help me? And so I like to expand their vision of how to grow their network. And a lot of times they're afraid to bring men into their network. And so I like to tell them, you know what? If that person harasses you, which it can happen, most likely won't happen, you can delete and block them on LinkedIn. Absolutely. So I like, I like people to know, and nobody knows, like that person doesn't know that you did it, yeah. okay? So I like people to know that, that on LinkedIn you can delete and block someone. And then yes, letting go of people. Um, I had a situation where someone I was kind of collaborating with on certain things, they actually pivoted and started training on LinkedIn using some of my lingo. Oh. That was really hurtful. And I decided, and we have a lot of mutual friends and colleagues, but I decided that person, um, I did not want to be connected with them on social media anymore. I <laughs> have actually had similar experiences as well. Um, and yeah, and you need to be in your power and just completely cut that off. That, there's, that is just not, good energy to have isn't it not at all in your um, yeah in your um in your community so i've learned so much from you very bit in a very short space of time so i'm really excited <laughs> oh good to keep you on this podcast for the rest of the day no i'm just joking and um, so yeah what other tips then can you tell us about linkedin and how powerful the platform is and um, i used to see it so correct me, because I know that I'm wrong here, and just listening to what you're saying, but I've seen it as being quite, did I say, corporate. But Absolutely. Okay. Back in the day, it was corporate. LinkedIn was started as a job-seeking platform. And that's what so many people think. Oh, you put, you go on LinkedIn when you're looking for a job. You put like your resume, right? So that's how it started, but it has evolved and it's so underutilized for the business world. Even now, you know, I've trained, I don't know how many, probably 800 people, a thousand people on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, and so it's so powerful. The average income is $115,000. So those are people, right? That can afford your services and products. There's 550 million people here right? This is a social platform, but it's a professional platform yeah. um, versus Facebook. Now there's nothing wrong with Facebook. I use Facebook and LinkedIn, but I find a little more professionalism over here on LinkedIn. And it's, it's for job seekers still, but has evolved onto this platform that's business to business and business to consumer. Fantastic. So we all need to be over here. All, all you women got your own business. I need you to jump over to LinkedIn, start a profile, get a company page and let's get, let's build your brand on LinkedIn. Absolutely. hundred percent. So what, um, well, first of all, where can we find you in the online space? Well, you can look up Mary Fane Brandt and I should come up on everywhere. So LinkedIn and Facebook, I have a Facebook page, Mary Fane Brandt coaching and consulting. And that's really, I throw out a lot of tips there and I do a Monday motivation for you guys. And I also do Facebook live twice a month with special guest speakers. And I have such a hot lineup for the end of the year. I'm oh. so excited about my guest speakers. A lot of them are from social media marketing world, which mm -hmm. is a huge conference here in San Diego. Wonderful. And I think that you have got a free gift for us. Would I be right in saying? I do. So um, I have the LinkedIn audit profile checklist. It's an audit list and it's going to help you optimize your profile. And there are even tutorial videos embedded into this PDF here. And you can find it on my website. If you just go to www.maryfanebrandt.com, it's my opt-in, but I want to, a lot of people won't go to the websites, right? They just go to LinkedIn and Facebook. So if you just go to that, you can get this beautiful checklist that I've created that really is going to optimize your profile in about 
like 20 minutes. Wow. Thank you so much. That is absolutely brilliant. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Would Could you just give me one more, um, one more, let's say your favorite quote. What's your favorite quote that, that keeps you going? Oh, my favorite quote. Um, oh, one. People are always like, I've got a million in my head. What's my I do. One? Well, you know, probably uh, my mom always said to me uh, when things would happen, like, God doesn't close a door without opening a window for you to look out. So even though doors get closed, there's always a window for you to look out and have a new vision. Oh, I love that. That is really beautiful. Uh, Mary, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for being part of the show today. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. It's been so much fun. I love it. It has been. Thank you. Your tips have been excellent. So everyone that is out there listening to this episode today, you can jump over um, and just get in touch with Mary. You and I, I am excited to, to learn more and I'm definitely going to be downloading that freebie too. So if you <laughs> can download that freebie and get in touch with Mary and find out a little bit more about what she does and her courses and programs, just scroll down and all the links are there. And if you want to find out a little bit about myself and Unstoppable, just below Mary's details, where you will find everything that you need to know about Unstoppable too. So I will say again, we appreciate you tuning in and being part of this movement. Thank you so much. And Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I will speak to you on the next show. Bye now. Bye.